Hey guys, so that was my summary of the blue that I received from my friend. And yeah, you can, Magic's history before the new people got like, you know, the new designers and stuff like that and they thought Counterspell was too strong and not fun. Um, magic history actually can be defined via Counterspells because it was reprinted so often. I'm going to go over my nine favorite booster packs of all time. I'm just going to lay them out here and then talk a little bit about each of them and why I like them and give you kind of a history lesson of when I played Magic. So, uh, Tenth Edition was, oh, you can't even see Tenth Edition, I'll move it aside. Tenth Edition was a very interesting edition. Actually, these are, I should be recently open packs, yeah. I guess I didn't get anything particularly valuable from it. Oh, I took the rare out and that makes sense. And then Play Big, the Grand Prix Pro Tour was not like what it currently is. I remember playing a lot of 10th edition because it was black bordered. It had a lot of classic cards like uh, Recover was from Invasion. It just was a bunch of reprints and that's what I liked about it was it wasn't too fancy. You knew what you were getting. This was before they were making like new cards. Now the new cards actually was very fun and I did enjoy the new cards. I tried to keep a booster pack of every set I have ever liked and opened and I would rank 10th edition as my ninth most favorite set to open and it was a great draft set. I remember it quite fondly. Now we have Core Set 2013 with Liliana's Shade. I remember the Planeswalkers being the set. Rats, this is one of my favorite cards. Smelt, Gem of Becoming, Nicol Boles, D Dusk Mantle, and, oh, and then the Beast Token. Oh, this was the Fragtus, I believe. The Fragtus and Restoration Angel. It was, oh, and Agra of Boles. <laughs> this is so fun. So when I was in law school at uh, William & Mary, this is the set I played a lot of in Standard. I didn't draft it, but I played a ton of this in Standard, uh, and it was some of the best cards. I did go, I went to every one of these pre-releases. 10th edition, I don't really remember. Next, uh, Shadows over Innistrad, and this one does have the rare, but it's like out of order. Actually, it has like a lot of, uh, it's more on commons than should. I don't know what's going on. Is this a flip card? No, it's the flip. Oh, the flip is uncommon, that's why. So this is just a regular pack. Filear. Shadows over Innistrad is one of my favorite sets to open. I know I told you Elgic Moon is as a value set. I think Elgic Moon will hold value just because of Liliana of the Last Hope. If you were to buy a box, right? Or a fat pack. Well, I wouldn't suggest buying any boxes or store. I would suggest buying the fat pack of Lily. These, some fat packs are very expensive and I'll show you why Lily will be expensive in the future. Look at this artwork. You might not think it's like a big deal, but I can tell you, given the fact that I own lots of fat packs and I'm interested in their value, the artwork makes a huge difference. And if you have, you know, let's say an angel or um, in what planar chaos, you have a chroma, a very beautiful chroma, it does make a difference. All right, Judgment. Let's open Judgment. So I, sometimes I will open a pack. Ooh, I totally forgot this. I think this was played, reprinted. And this was an Onslaught. Oh no, the, the Onslaught one was like this one, but it had Cycling. So Filth, and I took the rare out of this one. So I do try to keep one pack just as is. But even then, you know, you're looking for value, especially these older packs. Like here, obviously I can afford to keep that in. At this point in time, I was just looking for value. So that is my six. So nine, eight, seven, six. Six most beloved pack. And then Champions of Kamigawa. This was when I was in high school. I was a senior in high school. Lava Spike is a good one. Uh, I haven't opened these packs in some time. Wow, I must have took the uncommon. I like the set, I always liked it, but as you can see from the price tag, 
no one else did. Like, it used to be you could get this set for $2.25, and even then, that was, considered, that was considered retail. So it wasn't like they were giving you a discount or anything. These, this is retail. Judgment was $2.50 because it did slightly better. Next, Scourge. So we're going to go very close to the top bunch now. What did I like about this? Uh, I like the fact that it was just big dragons and dumb stuff. Like Dragon Breath, each of the colors had a dragon version. And Dragon Breath was actually the best one. I remember this card, there were so many cards that were based on you drawing on the casting cost of it. So you would pay, play this for free, you would morph it for one, and then you would like draw eight with the next, with another card. I don't know if we have the other card. But yeah, the mountain cycling, you had Twisted Abomination was one of the best, absolute best cards in Draft and Limited. Oh yeah, I remember this one. Fatal Mutation. Flying Protection from Dragons. Nice. I remember Scourge fondly. I believe I was in middle school when this came out. And middle school is when I had most of my friends who were playing Magic. So, Shadows of Innistrad was a good set, but I don't have that many more Magic friends, so I don't think it was a great. This was in William Mary Law School. Then you had Kamigawa in high school, which is kind of fun because you had more income, but you had less friends who played Magic. Scourge is when all the kids in middle school played it. Uh, Dark Steel was also in middle school, I believe. Scourge must have been like beginning of middle school, and then Dark Steel must have been end of middle school. I remember Fifth Dawn was the first booster box I ever bought, and I thought it was so awesome. Oh, not booster box, booster case. I was like, wow, I'm wealthy and I'm rich, and it, it meant so much for me to buy Fifth Dawn a booster box of, or booster case of it. And this was, but this one's my favorite, and you might ask, why is it your favorite? It just, we, more people, it's kind of like, I'm not basing this on how powerful the set is or how valuable the set is. I know a lot of you are thinking that's kind of funny given that we're an MTG Finance channel. I'm basing it on like who I played with, what we played, and overall how fun it was. Now my most favorite things are Morning Tide and Eve Tide. And I remember this set very well with the tree folks and how clever the Shard Volley, which I have plenty in foil. I collected this in foil because I felt it would be not because it was valuable, just because I felt like it would be pretty cool. Walk, Walker of the Grove. What I loved about this was both the time period. It was, so when I went to college, freshman year at NYU, it was Dissension. That was a pre-release, my freshman year. And then towards my junior year, I believe it was Morning Tide and Eve Tide that they came out afterwards. And when you're in college, you have more freedom. You live in Manhattan, New York City and there's very little uh, you cannot do. So I loved playing Magic at that time. I love these cards. This is my favorite set of all time. And it's, oh, another net. Oh, back then this wasn't valuable. <laughs> so that's why it's in this pack. I literally took everything of value. Oh, wow, uh, I don't, okay. So these are my top nine sets that I played and it's not because they're valuable or I think there's very there's a lot of money in them. It's because who you play with, right? Magic is a community game, and who you play with makes like a very big difference in how you enjoy the game. But that is it. I will talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.